for more on this, uh, let's speak to Nicola Hill, who joins us now from London. Nicola, this is very, very sad indeed. Um, tell us more about the, the problems, the challenges that uh, blind people are facing when it comes to COVID-19 safety measures. I think it sounds what you said there, Maria. It's being able to judge that physical distance, knowing whatever two metres or one metre is, if you can't see. Um, the, I was speaking to Sarah Lambert from the charity, the RNIB, this morning, and she was saying that, you know, they're getting hundreds of calls a day from people who are effectively locked in their homes, even when they are allowed to go, to go outside, because they're just too nervous, they're too scared. And some of these people, I think she said in her survey, 21% of them are so nervous about leaving home that they're actually rationing food because they don't want to go shopping. Particularly, you know, if you can imagine somebody going into a supermarket, how can they judge what is the, the right distance between themselves and another shopper or a member of staff? And those who are partially sighted in particular shopping, ordinarily they will be picking up products and looking at them closely to ensure that they're buying the right one. Now, we're encouraged at the moment to only pick up a product that we are intending to buy, not to then put it back on the shelves. And they are too nervous to do that. I mean, we're seeing pictures of um, a lady there with a white cane. Sarah was telling me that many people now who perhaps wouldn't ordinarily have used their canes because they're partially sighted, they don't necessarily want to advertise that they have a disability, have now brought them back into play just because that shows to other people that they have got um, a sight disability. And of course, children, we're talking about, you know, children going back to schools in various countries. Difficult enough for a small child to socially isolate, or uh, physically distance ordinarily. But these children who have been socially isolating up until now, when they go back to school and they can't see, how can they keep the distance? And even those people who have guide dogs, which many blind people do, certainly here in the UK, a guide dog doesn't know how, what is a two metre or a one metre distance. It just wants to ensure that its owner's going on the right path. So there's lots of issues for people who are blind. It's really, really concerning. And I think sometimes we may have to take the initiative and, and a responsibility as uh, public uh, citizens. Nicola, what can be done? As you just said, actually, we need to take that initiative. The onus really is upon us to keep away, to keep that distance from somebody who is blind and partially sighted. Sarah Lambert was telling me that some people, particularly those who don't have the white K in the dark glasses or the um, guide dog, have actually been shouted at or harangued because they haven't kept that requisite distance. One of the things they've been talking about is whether they should be wearing badges that display that they have sight problems but of course you need to be quite close to be able to read that badge. Another thing that the RNIB certainly is asking for is that shops that do have these perspex screens to put a tape around the outside of it so that somebody who's partially sighted is aware that there's a screen there because otherwise they're not able to see that. They want governments worldwide to put various um, things into place to to support people with disabilities like those but i think the main thing is it it's on us the community spirits that have been shown worldwide throughout this pandemic has been wonderful and the charities are saying can we extend this can we make sure that we're helping people who have disabilities and uh, what about other people with different disabilities such as people who are deaf people who may be autistic what about them they too face a lot of tremendous problems and are finding themselves living in increasingly smaller and smaller isolated worlds. One of, the, one of the things that's being suggested for people who are deaf is for us to wear masks that have a, a transparent part coming across our lip. This is, only, this is not only for people who need to lip read, but it's also for people who rely upon sign language. Now, to be honest, Maria, I didn't know this, that sign language also relies upon facial expressions and mouth movements, as well as um, the signs that we see people doing with their hands. So this is something that many charities representing people who are deaf are saying, can we have these transparent masks that you're seeing on the screen at the moment? Because that really would help people who have deaf issues. And again, they're talking about the concerns for children. Because many children who are deaf or have hearing loss 
are resistant or more reluctant perhaps to actually say, oh, I didn't hear that, would you repeat it? They haven't got the, the confidence to do that. So they might sometimes just pretend they understand when they really don't. And that's why they're asking if we have these masks that have um, a transparent insert, it would make life a lot easier for them. And also for teaching, some of the online learning systems that are in place for, for children like this don't have the software that's necessary to ensure that deaf people can understand you can imagine if you're if you're teaching via Skype or Zoom or one of these platforms and you're not able to to hear what the teacher's saying, you are reliant upon some sort of software to help you. Nicola, thank you so much for highlighting uh, these areas. And as you say, it's up to us to be more responsible and uh, keep that goodwill that has come about during the pandemic. Nicola Hill in London, thank you so much.